Yes. Welcome. I am Tranquil Float with the Anti-Scan Token team. And today we've just got a video on how to use etherscan.io in identifying Uniswap projects and just taking a little bit of a look at them to really ascertain if they're a scan or not. So etherscan.io is a really lovely website that basically can take a look at any transaction or coin token technically on the Ethereum network. So how do we do this? So just say I want to find Tatera, which is obviously a pretty popular project in Uniswap at the moment. The issue you find is that you end up with a lot of scams if you just search in Etherscan. And actually when you're trying to buy it on Uniswap directly, the search function is not very good and you often do, you know, you won't find the actual project. So what do you do? Well, you can either go to the website and you can just go and grab the contract directly. And that's often, that's the safest way to do it. You go to the official source, the Telegram, the Discord, the website, whatever, you get the contract from there. Alternatively, you can go to uniswap.info. So this is a official website for Uniswap, basically just showcasing the data behind all the trades. And so what you can do is you, know, you search in here and it does come up, but obviously you still have the clones coming up. Um, normally a scam won't have a graphic uploaded, they won't bother with that, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's not a scam. Um, so how do you do this? So, you know, you go into Uniswap Info. This is a token I was looking at before. Uh, I didn't really know much about it before I was making this video. So to me, it's just a random token. So we've got foam token. So first of all, we scroll down, we can grab the contract address here, you click and copy, or you can just open it on at the scan directly. And what information do we have here? So first of all, you wanna to go to the token tracker itself. We'll come back to this afterwards. So this is the page for the phone token. So what information do we have available? We have the price, we've got the market cap, we've got the total supply, and we've got the number of holders. That's the number of individual addresses holding at least some number of phone. Then we have the number of total transfers, the contract address, which is the previous web page. We've got decimals, not really important. Official site, pretty self-explanatory, and a whole bunch of social profiles. Now, often scams, and not even not just scams, a lot of low market low market cap projects don't have this built in, and that's okay. But it's just something to you know. Obviously, it's nice when you're investigating to be able to look at all their sources of information. So, what do we have here? We've got a bunch of tabs. First one, transfers. So this is obviously showing all the transfers on for the phone token. And how to quickly read this is, so we can see quantity over here, the 12,421 phone was sent from this address to the this address. So this is a Ethereum address. All Ethereum addresses start with 0x. So we got 0x762. So 762, is sending to Uniswap V2 phone. If you see Uniswap V2, you know, phone or whatever project it is, this is actually the liquidity address. So basically for Uniswap, when you're buying or selling, this is the address that you're interacting with. So this person is transferring the phone from their address to Uniswap, meaning they are selling phone. And so they sold 12,421 phone. So if you see foam here, that means foam is being sold to this address. And so then looking down, we can see 150 transferred to 762. So this address actually. So you can see this one bought, went to this address. No, so this one transferred to this address and then this address then sold. This is a uh, exchange address, Galaxy, and you'll see other ones like Polynix, um, you know, IDX, whatever other decentralized exchanges the project might be on. 
And so what else can we look at? We've got the holders. This is a really nice tab. One of the ones you want to look at first, really, because it shows the breakdown in the ownership of the project. So we can see here, the this address owns 65% of the supply. Now, generally, you really want to be careful with any project that has a large majority of the token held by any one individual address, because obviously that address then has the power to crash the price. And that could even cause a runaway effect where other people panic sell and it could really kill a project. And obviously if they're a scammer, they have more percentage of the supply, it's, they can just dump on you a lot easier. So in this case though, this address is a phone, it's a multi-sig address. So a multi-sig means that basically you can set it up for your own rules, but it means just so you had five developers, each one of those would have a key and then you can set it up so three out of the five developers need to sign on for any transactions. So this isn't perfect either because obviously, you know, you can just say there's 10 developers and you only have two, um, you know, but, and obviously you can't just trust that the multi-sig is actually working correctly. You need to verify that yourself to 100% know that this is a real multi-sig. But let's just assume for now, this project, that's legit. So 65% is held by the team. Then we've got a private address, another private address. We've got another address. And so this symbol here, is, sorry, the contract, you, know, you see this little picture here. It means it's a contract. So that means it's not a private address. It means that one of the one of the contracts for this project is holding a certain amount of phone for whatever reason. So this could be for staking, this could be for any number of reasons, and it's really impossible to tell unless you look into the code. So then we've got Polynix, Decentralized Exchange, and then we've got a whole bunch of other holders. And in this, we can also take a look at a nice little graphic. If you click on this token holders chart, you get this lovely little pie chart. Who doesn't love graphs, right? Uh, so this is kind of currently showing the top 100 holders. You can change that up here. So you can show top 500, for instance. And what this will do is, yeah, show you a top 500, pretty self-explanatory. So you get some more information here. 99% of all foam is held by the top 500 holders, which is pretty wild when you see that there's total 2,500 people. So those 2,000 dresses roughly only own 1%. So, yeah, you know, it shows you the breakdown. And this can give, like, really give you good information of just how centralized the project is or how distributed it is, you know. You really do want, you know, it, it just, there's no, it's not inherently bad if there's some whales, for instance, like these bad boys, they own you know, a decent amount of supply. But it's just something to be aware of. So what you could also do is if you, click this and we'll open it up you can then look at the history of this account so you can kind of figure out a bit about what they're doing uh you can see if the you know an early whale that bought in and then they're just selling or you can see if they're continuing to buy for this address we can see they did a test buy of one and then a week later they bought their stack of 54k and that was quite a while ago they've just been holding it ever since and in this we can also see the value of Wow, that's okay. Yep. And they own 5.4% of the supply. So we'll close that. We'll go back. Back. So we go back again. And we'll go on to the next tab. So we've got info. Mostly, I, I mean, I've almost never seen this filled out. This is kind of impressive. They have bothered to do this. Uh, just gives you a bit of information about the project and some more information. Then we've got exchange. So this is listing all the decentralized exchanges that the coin is running on. So, you know, generally a scam is not gonna bother with listing on anything except Uniswap. So obviously these guys have listed on a fair few other decentralized exchanges, but you can see the majority of the trade is in Uniswap. And you can see the price here as well. So this is this could offer you some arbitrage opportunities if you're 
if there's enough volume, because you can see Polynex, they've only done $14.30 in trades, so you're not going to be able to swing this, for example, you know. Now, um, so the next tab, tab, we've got Dex trades, just pretty self-explanatory, all the trades on the Dexes, read contract and write contract are uh, basically very archaic ways to interface with the smart contract. Um, but there's a much better way to actually take a look um, at the contract itself. And we'll get to that after this. So we've got analytics. Uh, generally, I don't use this, although I feel like it could be utilized more, especially with the number of unique senders. Um, the transfer amount could be interesting as well. Comments, yeah, you know, not really that important. You will see some people maybe bitching about scammer <laughs> if this is the scammer's address. So what we do is we'll go back to the contract, we'll put on this. And then if you click here, this will actually show you not the entire smart contracts, but the part of the smart contract that is available for the public to view. And so there's many reasons why you don't want to show your entire code because it does open up security vulnerabilities. Um, but you can see here, this is an exact match with the code. So that means, you know, there's not like a different code being used. Um, and we'll do another video later, basically taking a look at how you can read Solidity. And I wanna do a video focusing primarily on how to read Solidity for non-coders. Because you can still get some basic information from this um, that can clue you on to if it's a scam or not. You know, you could have a feature in here that's, that, that's going to let you mint new coins, which if you know it hasn't been openly shared with the community, it's obviously a really scary thing because the developers can just create more tokens and they can do a whole bunch of shit. Um, if you don't see it just popping up here, you'll have to, it'll be like a button like, like this, decompile, and that'll like basically decompile the smart contract so you can view it publicly. And so that's everything for today, guys. Um, yeah, so just a quick video of using Etherscan. We'll have more content coming out soon on identifying scams. We'll be doing some live streams with, you know, live identifying scams. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Cookie. Uh, it's a very short stream, I know. Um, but we're just using this, you know, just, we'll, fuck it, we'll do it live. It's kind of like the uh, <laughs> the sentiment. But this will be uploaded to our YouTube as well. And um, yeah, we'll have more live streams coming out soon. I'm looking to pump out at least one a day for the next few days. We'll have a live stream covering our DAP, which is due to be released very soon, TM. And yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.